the devil is real. We need to be real, brethren. We need to speak the truth in love. And the truth is, we need to increase our efforts. David says, I, pursue, I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again till they were destroyed. Can we stand and make a decision to destroy the devil without turning back? Can we stand? Because, brethren, what I was just bringing home to you, we need to be very serious with the things of God. But as long as we get tired for two days, the devil works for 24-7. Have you ever realized the devil is always working? Always working. The devil is working. But some of us, we get tired quickly. We give up quickly. We get tired. One as if you so we need to stand. My, my, my focus is we need to stand. Now, another area we need to overtake. We need to overtake in harvest. We need to overtake in harvest. Amos 9, 13. We need to overtake in harvest. The Bible says, Then days are coming, declares the Lord, when the reaper will overtake, will be overtaken by the plowman. And the planter by the one trending graves. New wine will drip from the mountains and flow from all hills. So we need to overtake in harvest. So that means we need to sow. We need to plow. Those are good things to overtake. We need to overtake in what? In harvest. The Bible says that the, the one preparing the land will overtake the one harvesting. Bwana asifiwe. Yule ambaye anavuna atapito na mkulima. Kumanisha, there will be so much plenty until the planting season or the cultivating season comes before you have harvested. Bwana asifiwe. So we need to overtake in harvest. Another one. We need to overtake in prosperity and the blessings. We need to overtake in prosperity and the blessings. Deuteronomy 28.2, the Bible says, All and these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. For the blessings of God to overtake us, we need to put effort in loving God. We need to put our effort. We need to persist in loving God. We need to stand in loving God. We need to commit our lives to God. We need to obey God. Now, I want us to go to the next level. What we need to overtake? What do we need to overtake? Number one, we need to be patient. We need to be patient. We need to be patient. To be patient means to be diligent. To be patient means to be diligent. To be patient means... To endure, enduring, to endure, to be patient means long suffering, long suffering. We need to be people who can stand for a long time without giving up. In the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 10, the Bible says, Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, endure patiently. Endure patiently. When the one endure comes, it means there are pains, there are hard times, but we still hold on. One as if you were. Do we hold on when things are tough? Do we hold on when challenges come? Can you hold on on that marriage? Can you hold on on that job? Can you hold on in praising God? So, we need to endure Patiently. So, Revelation says, Those, since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the world. So, the world will be tested. What we are going through today is a test. Can you endure? Or you just give up? Can you endure or you just give up? So we need to stand. Brethren, our life is not a straight line. 
life is not butter and a bread. You know, sometimes we think that life must be easy. Nobody saying that life must be easy. Life must be the way it is. But you need to have the capacity to hold on. Mountains will come on your way as you walk around. Valleys will come. But you need to make a decision that I will climb mountains if God does not give you the ability to do what? To, 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 to open the mountain and go through it. So we need to be ready for anything. Many people today have no capacity to endure. One has a few. That's why we are, many people cannot hold on for some times. We do go to, inaweka mtu chini, and give up. Many people are giving up businesses. Many people are giving up education. Others are giving up anything. Even marriages. Many people are giving up. Because our expectations are wrong. Life is not a straight line. One has a few. Life is not a straight line. The joy of life is the valleys, the mountains, and the storms you encounter. One has a few. The many storms, the many valleys, the many mountains, they make life and jo joyous and better. So we should not give up when things happen, happen in our lives. When we lose uh, patience, there are a few things which happen. When people are not patient, a few things happen. Number one, they complain. When people are not patient, they complain. When people are not patient, they complain. The children of Israel complained because they were not patient with God. One as if you They complained and they grumbled. One as if you Another one is fear. When we lose patience, fear creeps in our lives. And we know that fear is the worst weapon of the devil. One as if you Fear comes inside. Unansa kuogopa. Na sasa uoga ikikuingia. By the way, uh, wale ambao mnajua, when fear comes, you start making shortcut decisions. Bwana asifiwe. Unaamua sasa this is the way, unakimbilia iyo. Bwana asifiwe. And the fear blinds our eyes. Wale ambao mwais tuliwa, au fikiri yangi utakimbia pandegani ukisha stuka. True or false? Fear blinds our sight. It takes away your sight, you make decisions, and you start running in any direction. And at the end of the day, sometimes you run toward the enemy. So we need to be careful uh, of, of not being patient. Another one, doubt arises. When patience lacks, complaining and grumbling comes upon in our lives. Fear creeps in our lives. Then another one, doubt, doubt. Lack of faith. When fear comes, doubt or lack of faith comes. One thing you know about faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for. When we have no faith, we can't see the future. When we have doubts, we can't see the future. So the devil takes away your faith. When you lack faith, your eyes closes. You can't see the future. The other one, We'll, uh, what, what, what we need to do, we need to learn to wait upon God. We need to learn to wait upon God. We have a story in the book of 1 Samuel. I will, not just read, I will just read the verse. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 8, the Bible says, Then he waited seven days according to the time set by Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. So he said, bring a burnt offering and a peace offering here to me. And he offered the burnt offering. Now it happened as soon as he had finished presenting the burnt offering, that Samuel came and Saul so went out to meet him that he might greet him. So you know the story of Saul. He had been sent to fight the enemies of Israel by, by God. And Samuel had promised him to come back after seven days. When seven days were complete, the Bible says the people were impatient because the enemies were coming forward them. 
So fear crept in them. Some of them started running from Saul. Others hiding in caves. Then Saul, as the, as the leader, he decided to do what he was not supposed to do. What? To do. He did the sacrifice. And after finishing, God came. Uh, Samuel came. And he, the whole of his legacy began to crumble because of lack of patience. That one act brought down everything. The, the name he had acquired began going down. So, brethren, I want to challenge each one of us. We need to be patient with God. Sometimes the devil can scare us, but we need to stand. In the book of Psalms 41, 40, Psalms 40, verses 1, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and earned my, earned my cry. I, I, I waited patiently for God and it, he heard my cry. Habakkuk 2, 3. The Bible says, For the revelation awaits on appointed time. It speaks of the hand and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Every vision is valid. But timings can be different. One has a few. Timing can be different. Every vision will come to pass. But timings, we need to have a lot of patience. One thing I've realized about God. God will never do what we need. Have you ever realized that? God is not direct. I like saying that God is not like we, we parents of modern days. One as if you, you know, our modern day parents will give whatever we are asked for by our children. True or false? One as if you. So we need to understand God. God is not scared by our, our wants. Another thing about God about, about uh, overtaking, we need to be persistent. Number two, persistent. What is persistent? To continue in cause regardless of the opposition. Continue in cause regardless of the opposition. Go persistent. Persistent. I love that one. Persistent. To continue in the cause regardless of the opposition. We need to be persistent, brethren, especially to the things of God. We need to stand. Let me tell you, success is doing something until you are perfect in that thing. One has a few. Success is standing with what you have started until you complete it. You know, sometimes we do things and run here. You are here, you are there, you are there. Let me tell you, God wants people who are persistent. Can you do the same thing? The same way. Can you do it? Do it and do it and do it until you become like that thing. So God wants us to be persistent in doing good. In the book of Luke 8, we have a story of a window. I think I need to read this one. The Bible says, do you remember the story? Luke 18, 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Saying, so Jesus wanted to teach people to pray without losing what? Losing heart. Because sometimes, why was Jesus teaching us this? He realized that people pray and lose heart. We pray for sometimes and we think God is not listening. I want to request, how, how many of you have prayed and thought God did not listen? One as if you. So we need to be careful. So Jesus said, people ought to pray without doing what? Giving up. Nasema. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Continue. Saying there was a certain city, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard men. Now there was a window in the city and she, and to, uh, she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterwards, he said within himself, 
Though I do not fear God for nor regard man, yet because of this window troubles me, I will avenge her, test at least by a continual coming, she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the judge, the unjust God judge said. And it shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night for him, though he bears long with them. So God will answer every prayer of our lives. But we need to be persistent. We need to stand. We should not get tired. To sichoke. Kwa sababu, we have a, 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 we have a long journey to walk. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me even once in Christ Jesus. We need to press on. Don't get tired. Don't get tired of that family. Don't get tired of that marriage. Tired of salvation. Usichoke na iyo hombi. Just persist. Wana sifiwe. Stand in prayers. Stand in prayers. Look at the people who are persistent. Even in politics. One day, one time, they achieve their goals. Wana sifiwe. Look at the people who are persistent in salvation. They live a better life. Wana sifiwe. They live a better life. You know, sometimes there are many things we don't see, but there are many things happening around us. One as if you were, there are so many things you don't see, but God does many things in our lives. But my, 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 my main issue is let's learn to be persistent. Let's learn to stand. Mungu awezi tuita tu, tukutanange tu atebure. There is something God is doing in our lives. We need to persist. Let's not get tired. Let's not succumb to the trials of the devil. You know, the devil is very cunning. He will make you give up. He will make you... Sometimes you look at things and sometimes you may not see anything. Every great man complained to God one day. He made sense with God. Moses made sense with God. One as if you, Jesus himself, God, made sense with his father. He told him, if, this, if it's possible, please remove this cup. My God, my God, where have you left me? That was complaint. One as if you. So sometimes we need to tell God what we feel. We need to tell God what we feel. So, sometimes things can happen that way. But we need to continue pressing on. We need to stand like Paul. Continue pressing on. Continue pressing on to earn the goal. So, another number three. We need to be persistent. Uh, consistent. For us to overtake, we need to be consistent. 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 Consistent is to maintain your course. Consistent is to be reliable. So to mesema persistent, it's overcoming obstacles. Consistence is remaining on the course. Yani utoki ubanduki kwa barabara. You are on that road. You are on that career. You are on that family. In season and out of what season? You don't give up. You don't just give up because of a few challenges. You don't give up because of a mountain ahead of you. You don't give up because of the valley the devil has brought in your family. So remain on the course. So to be consistent is to remain in the course. Is to be Reliable. Are you reliable? Can the church rely on you? Can your family rely on you? Can God rely on you? 
Mungu anaweza kukutegemea. Those are the questions we need to ask ourselves. Because if you are not reliable, there are secrets God will never communicate to you. If you are not reliable, there are jobs God will never give you. There are assignments God will never give you. One as if you by the way, one thing I've realized, if you fail God two times or three times, then, by the way, mungu wana ndaivati araka. Wana sifiwe. Aki kutrasi na kitu mara ya kwanza, ndiyo unaona watu, mtu wakipewa kipawa mara bili tatu, story na ishanga. Have you ever seen that? You have seen this in, even in our nation. Great men and women of God, but there comes a times when there is nothing and about them. Wana sifiwe. Wako tu pale. Vitu silinyamasa, siko pale. Ama wengine kama ni kuimba, they sing good songs, they hate for some times. Sa hile ngine wanaimba nyimbo, hata ipati, hakuna mtu wanaisikia. Hata muna saau, fulani bando yuko. Have you ever made you list a fulani bando yuko? And there are people who are always on the cutting edge. Why? Reliability. God can rely on you. God can trust you. Let me ask you somebody. Can God trust you? Can God trust you with the wealth? Can God trust you with the wealth? Can God trust you with the people? Can God trust you with a gift? Wanasifiwe. Na hiyo inakujanga na experience. Wanasifiwe. Na hansi mungu waki withdraw kitu. Kuirundisha inakuanga kazi. Lasima ufanya kazi. So we need to be consistent. In the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verses 2. 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, the Bible says, And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, and trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. God wants us to entrust what he has given us to reliable what? People. Reliable people. So you need to be reliable enough for God to trust you. So the things Paul was telling Timothy was saying, was telling Timothy, the things you have heard me say, and trust to reliable people. So God is looking for reliable people. So the question is, are you reliable? Are you reliable to carry the ones of God? Are you reliable to carry the secrets of God? Are you reliable to own on the anointing of God? The anointing. Are you reliable enough? Another one, Second Timothy 4.2, the Bible says, Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct and rebuke with great patience. And be careful. Be careful. And careful instructions. I repeat again. Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instructions be prepared in season and out of season i want to request some i want to ask a question are you a christian all around or you are a seasonal christian when i see few we need to be believers in all occasions brethren we need to be the same in season and out of season wapendwa a uh, salvation we need to make it a lifestyle. It should not be something about in a kuja to ni occasion. It should be a lifestyle. It should be a lifestyle. And we need to make that as part of our lives for us to go far in the things of God. So, persistent. Remember the few things I've talked for today. Maybe let me wind up there. For us to overtake for us to overtake, you need to be persistent. You need to be uh, uh, consistent. You need to be patient. You need to be consistent, patient, and what? Persistent. Remember, when we are not patient, complaining, fear, and doubt will arise. And what we have realized is learn to wait upon God. God is never late. 
Bwana asifiwe. Mungu achelewi na akawi na Habakuk inatusaidia kujua ya kwamba Mungu achelewi wala akawi. I want us to rise up and pray. I want us to rise up and pray. I want us to pray that God will give us the seal to stand. We shall overtake. Pray for that family. Pray for that uh, marriage. Pray for your life, that business. You will overtake in Jesus' name. Pray for yourself. There are things which have come and you feel like giving up. I want you to pray that you shall not give up in Jesus' name. Wana asifiwe. Refuse to give up. I want us to raise our hands. Declare, O Lord Almighty, in the name of Jesus. I declare today, I shall not give up. I shall not give up my vision. I shall not give up my family. I shall not give up my marriage. I shall not give up my, my business. I shall not give up my career. I shall not give up my ministry. I shall not give up the call of God in me. In the name of Jesus. I want to take time and just pray for something. Pray for that family. Pray for your marriage. Pray for your children. Pray for your business. Pray for that career you are doing. Pray for the gift of salvation. Tell God that nothing, nothing shall bring you down. Father, in the name of Jesus, I refuse to go down. I refuse to give up. I refuse to give up. In the name of Jesus, Father, I declare, I shall be patient. I shall persist. I shall be consistent. In season and out of season, Father, I shall be reliable. I shall be reliable. I refuse to be confused by the enemy. I refuse to give up my vision. I refuse to give up my gift. I refuse to give up my family. I refuse to give up the ministry you have given to me. I refuse to give up my calling in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I declare, I shall stand in season and out of season. I shall stand in season and out of season for the glory and the honor of your name. Father, I declare, I shall never give up. I shall never give up. Father, I thank you. I pray for your people. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. I declare and Jehovah, Father, none of them shall give up their vision. None of them shall give up their dream. None of them shall give up their families, their marriages, their career. They shall not give up salvation. None of them shall be stolen by the devil for the glory and the honor of your name. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. I declare you shall give them the spirit of persistence, the spirit of consistence, and the spirit of patience, so that, Lord, they shall stand. They shall not be moved. May they be mount like mountains. May they be like mountains, Jehovah, Father, which can never be shaken, but abides forever. Father, we thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name, do I pray they believe? In Jesus' name. Let's celebrate God for his goodness and mercy. Amen and amen. God bless you.